Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am your host, David Streggy, here on Inside Movies Galore. And uh, my next review is on a film by director uh, Mitchell uh, Altieri, which uh, is called The Night Watchman. But uh, before I get into uh, that film, I, I wanted to apologize on my review right before this uh i said that uh uh les miserables uh, uh, from 2012 was actually uh uh put uh put out by andrew lloyd weber well um i got my information wrong uh it was actually put out by uh alain boublil and claude michael schoenberg uh, uh, under uh, for the original stage musical, which was adapted to stage from Victor Hugo's novel. So I apologize if I got my information wrong, uh, wrong but also uh, some of the writing credits go to William Nicholson uh, and Herbert Kretzmer. So I wanted to get some of that straight before I went into uh, this film. So, um, first of all, to, to understand a little bit of, uh, this film, you have to understand where the director, uh, comes from. Originally he, uh, wrote and director, uh, directed a film with his film partner, uh, Phil Flores, who evidently Mitch and Phil both became known as the Butcher Brothers uh, after this uh, uh, film, and this was called the Hamiltons that they wrote uh, uh, that they, uh, they wrote for the Eight Films to Die For uh, series, and then um, from there uh, they went uh, on to direct with Sony Pictures the um, remake of the '80s horror classic April Fool's Day uh, in 2007, and it was released in 2008. Uh, and then they uh, worked with the producers of Halloween and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and directed the independent film The Violent Kind, which has actually become kind of a cult classic among certain, you know, independent, you know, people. <coughs> <coughs> which was about a bunch of redneck aliens. So, in any case, so after the Hamiltons, uh, they directed the Thompsons, which was the sequel to the Hamiltons. So you have a little bit, a bit of a um, history with uh, at least Mitchell Altieri going on there. So, um, and ultimately he, uh, in 2017, he, uh, got together with Ken Arnold, Dan DeLuca, and Jamie Nash to co-write, <coughs> well, to direct the film The Night Watchman, uh, which two of the writers, Ken Arnold and Dan DeLuca, also star in the movie uh, as Ken and Luca, but there is also uh, Jiggets, Karen, Rajiv, Randall, Willie, Penny, Margaret, Stacy, and uh, uh, and many others that have been involved with this project. Um, but anyways, uh, the storyline is this. Uh, evidently, there is a clown that is well known called Blimpo, who, with his troop of other clowns, visited Romania for a a show uh, since they are a traveling uh carnival so evidently blimpo died of some disease and uh moving forward uh, 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 with that we have three white uh, three night watchmen who work for a newspaper and the band member of a 
of a band called Dra Cool uh, has come to Ken and Jiggett's in the presence of at least these two watchmen as they ask him some questions and watch the video that uh, that he was on with a band and they basically put him through somewhat of a college intro where they uh, they basically put him through human bullying where they put him in a cage and they roll him down through some boxes to become part of their night watchmen so to speak to man up well they give him a uniform and uh, it's got the name on it called Raji, but that's not his real name. Now, on the other hand, uh, there is a news journalist by the name of Karen who evidently has a girlfriend uh, by the name of Penny, which nobody ever, uh, ever really pays attention to. And somehow a coffin gets delivered to their basement. And their boss, Randall, who was played by James Rimar, uh, ultimately goes down and try uh, 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 and tries to open up the uh, the casket, and it, it, you see that it's Blimpo the clown, and you just assume that he gets killed or or, or somehow. Um, in the process but what we don't know is that this clown and his fellow clowns have actually been turned into vampires so we have clown vampires coming to this newspaper place and you start seeing dead bodies all over the place except these Vampires seem like they're a little bit of a combination between zombies and vampires because they've got the growl of a zombie, and yet they've got the teeth of a, vamp uh, a vampire and the speed and strength of one. So, but there uh, there's a little bit of comedy in here uh, here because you've got you got Jiggets and Ken. Who've had a relationship for years, and they kind of are like uh, the the bros of the uh, movie, where they they cannot be without each other. And uh, supposedly, Ken's character has been macking on Karen's character without her knowing it, and uh, somehow, ultimately, all five of these uh, uh, p uh, people, uh, Ken, Luca. J uh, Jiggets, Karen, and Rajiv team up to go up against these vampire clowns. But all of them go through a state of fear. There is a moment where they are, are up against their, uh, their janitor, Willie, who turns into a, a vampire uh, vampire and uh he there is a hilarious moment where uh, where Jiggett's thumb gets stuck inside the dude's head and another thing is when they stake the vampire clowns or vampires so to speak they let out some gas so it's definitely comical, definitely entertaining, and I thought uh, thought the special effects were uh, pretty uh, awesome. It was a really fun film. Um, you you got these character uh, characters who come together, and in the end, you you see a possible setup for a second film for these. For the this group of ragtag misfits, it's almost it's almost uh, refreshing because uh, because uh, some of the humor 
is uh, spot on. So, uh, uh, so you know, in the now, and um, yet it's set up like an uh, like uh, some of the '80s slasher films. So it's kind of cool. So if you enjoy this kind of film, then definitely check it out. I thought it was entertaining, although. Uh, there is one thing that uh, I have to complain about. The only way that I could find it, uh, at least for now, is on my most dreaded uh, component, the Blu-ray, which I absolutely cannot stand Blu-ray. Although I own many Blu-rays per se because, uh, because my fiancé has a Blu-ray uh, player, I just refuse to believe that Blu-ray is the only godforsaken format uh, that uh, they can come up with. But still, the film was entertaining, and I think that you should definitely check it out. Uh, this, uh, Hopefully you have enjoyed this review. Uh, definitely like and subscribe if you like uh, how I talk about films. So definitely um, check it out on your own time. Uh, it, I mean, you can also have your own opinion and think that it sucks. So definitely was a fun feature. In any case, this has been David Stregge on Inside Movies Galore. I am signing off uh, for the next review. Catch you later.